Puyo Puyo, originally released in 1991 for the Nintendo Family Computer Disk System and then later re-released in cartridge format a couple years later, the latter being what's covered today, is one of the first games released in the long-running Puyo series of a billion titles and names. Puyo Puyo, Nazo Puyo, Puyo Pop, Dr. Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine, Kirby's Avalanche, Quirks, Timon and Pumbaa's Bug Drop, and of course my favorite being the rather controversial and rarely seen Jerry Lawler's Fun Bags. That last one is extremely rare and only three people in the world still have a copy. I am not one of them. I assume most of you are familiar with Puyo Puyo in some form or fashion. It's a rather popular series, so to speak, but to give a refresher of sorts. You have these colored stones, blobs, whatever you want to call them, falling from the top and you have to create lengths of four or more of these same colored stone things to clear them from the board. Naturally, the more you chain together, the more points you score. Though in a competitive sense, you try to form bigger chains in order to send more garbage down your opponent's well. Speed often goes fast and slow, and eventually once you top out, it's game over. It's pretty simple and straightforward stuff. Control's pretty solid. Move the bits with the D-pad, uses the A and B buttons to rotate clockwise and counter. If you played this sort of thing before, this isn't anything new or groundbreaking. You also have an option to determine which power-up appears every so often, each with different effects. There's a big stone Puyo thing, whatever you want to call it, that clears everything underneath wherever it lands. And there's Carbuncle, which will change stone colors to a certain degree and help you out a bit. Puyo Puyo only has two single player modes, Endless and Mission. The former being your usual keep playing until you eventually top out mode, and the latter being a series of puzzles where you have to accomplish certain conditions to move on to the next puzzle. And your progress is maintained via password, I assume because the disk system version had some sort of safe functionality, and this was a way around that. You do have the two-player competitive mode that the series is better known for, and it plays as well as you'd expect. Try to form chains to send garbage to the other player, in hopes of topping them out and winning the game. There's not much to this Famicom version of Puyo Puyo. It's one of the earliest versions of the game, so it's the most bare bones of the bunch compared to what would follow later on. But it's still a largely playable version of the game, and the core gameplay isn't really all that different from what's available now, then, forever, together, whatever. The overall presentation of Puyo Puyo is somewhat unsettling because this looks like something you'd find on those cheap Famicom knockoff plug and play things. I get this more from the audio than the visuals because, yeah, you have a couple classic tunes featured on here, but they're not exactly the best sounding versions of those tunes, even by Famicom slash NES standards. They're pretty subpar, and the sound effects fare no better either. And while the graphics are also fairly unremarkable, they do get the job done. There's no frills, but it doesn't look like total garbage. Overall, Puyo Puyo for Famicom is... Well, it's Puyo Puyo for Famicom. It plays about as well as any Puyo Puyo game that's been conceived in the history of the universe at the most minimal level of depth, and is about as bare bones as you could get with this series. Chances are, if you're a fan of Puyo Puyo, then you've probably played a whole bunch of better versions of the game, and the only reason to go back to this one is mostly out of morbid curiosity. Still, as far as Famicom puzzlers are concerned, Puyo Puyo is at least one of the better ones, and I was at least somewhat entertained, and that's good enough for me, I suppose. <laughs>